Hello, my absolutely beautiful Scorpio friends, and welcome to your horoscope for May of 2023. We're Scorpio this month. It is a really big deal. We have got the last lunar eclipse that is happening for the year in your sign. This is really a culmination of so much of what you've been working on, definitely for the last year, year and a half, but certainly I think a culmination of you understanding that, you know, you're different today some things that worked for you some things that you were comfortable with before are no longer in your repertoire anymore you're like that doesn't work for me so you've got these really significant changes and i want to address this like right out of the gate scorpios I was looking at the movement of Pluto, especially since we're starting the month with Pluto, one of your ruling planets going retrograde and how much movement has been happening there. So I wanted to address right away that if you've been feeling a little heavier, or even physically, if you've been feeling a little bit heavier, or you've been feeling like your, your mind is heavy, um, that this is something that I want to cue you to this month and some of the adjustments that you're going to be making and having these like final surrenders with things to really go to your diet. I want you to look at your diet and look at your body and look at having the conversation with the relationship that is your body because you've got a high amount of relationship energy on the table right now. And the most intimate, important relationship that you will have in this lifetime is not only with your divine connection and how you get plugged in there, but your body, right? Your first home that you live in. So really a lot of looking at where maybe you need to divorce bad habit patterns or bring in healthy patterns that really empower and lift you up. So I want to address that right out of the gate, Scorpios, because not everybody is, is feeling the the light and the empowerment of this particular transit and whether you are or you are not always coming back to the body is the first place to start i think all right beautiful scorpios let's get in here and see what is going on for you in this very significant month i think one of the most significant months that you're actually going to end up having here in 2023. so first of all at the beginning of the month on the first we're going to see pluto taking that retrograde in the energy of aquarius okay now, as Pluto moved into Aquarius in March, first of all, I want you taking note. When you look back to March, what was going on for you? What was happening between March and now? What kind of started to come to the surface around home, family, real estate, property, your roots, memories that were coming up? You know, was someone coming into your home? Was someone leaving your home? What are the deep changes that have been happening around something that has grounded in as a piece of foundation? Now, this can even be just where did you live? Have there been changes in your home life in some way? Changes with your parents, right? Look into this zone of your life and tell me, what's been coming up where either there's been this empowerment where you're like this home the home my home this home <laughs> in some way doesn't work for me anymore it has to die off so that something else can live it's very potent right and in that position it may be very empowering like you've been waiting to make a move and now finally it's happened to the other side of that though it may be like you are discovering or you you became aware and maybe it wasn't like pop awareness like mercury but pop like ooh, um i'm not sure what that is but something is off for me in this area and i need to adjust now as pluto takes this retrograde what you have an opportunity to do is some really deep research right where do you go next you've been provided some nugget no matter how small even if it's a mustard seed worth of energy you've been provided information now what do you do with it how do you move forward with it to facilitate the change where is that subconscious connection to what's keeping you staying in a pattern that's not working or empowered to move away from one right this is what you'll get to do during this beautiful um, retrograde period so take it on and take it pretty seriously now we'll see the Pluto retrograde go from zero Aquarius to 27 Capricorn the other thing I like about this is that because it is one of your ruling planets, you may feel it more deeply. You are more deeply informed, I think, here. And as we back up into that Capricorn zone, it's yet another signature for me that it's not anything new. You've seen it. You've been here. You've done it. You may be bringing it to some kind of culmination as we take this retrograde period, and it's quiet. 
Pluto works low and slow, so this may be something that is, you know, it is just not intellectual, but somewhere in your core, in your being, you're like, I gotta get that out of here, or I gotta move with this. So do your deep research and let me know what comes up for you in the comment section down below. On the fifth, big event, here it is. We've got this lunar eclipse happening at 14 degrees of Scorpio in your sign, in your first house. Now the lunar eclipse is of course this resetting. Right? It's an emotional, it's a life, it's a life path resetting. But more than anything, it is still our full moon for the month. So it is asking you to end something, acknowledge something, or to make an adjustment. And this full moon is bringing exposure emotionally. You know it now. You know it. You know it, it is illuminated to you. Call it up, call it out, call your healing, call your surrender, call your unburdening into your life. And what is this? Right? What is it about you? Is your body changing? Are you are you shedding weight in your body? Are you shedding toxins in your body? Are you shedding a story that your body has been waiting decades for you to open your mouth and tell the truth about so that you two can heal together? This is your first home. So when we've got energy happening in the first house, there can be all kinds of illumination, right? There can be symbolic things that come up for you where you're like, wow. You know, it's funny because it's like, oh, I remember being on this street and I can't even remember if I was on this street in this lifetime or another lifetime or maybe I was here in a dream and you explore that and see where your healing is at or potentially where your wound is at, right? Now, the other thing is that really, truly, it's a question of what does not work for me anymore, right? Because where you go, you are at. And that means in your business relationships, in your personal relationships, in the library, in the bathroom, where where you go is where you are at. So what doesn't work for you anymore? And now this eclipse, I think is like this last reset in this next six months to even a year that says, okay, I am willing to hands down, face square up to this, take responsibility and move myself forward in a way that sheds those things that simply do not work anymore. It is so powerful. It is so powerful. And interestingly enough, Mars is still in the energy of cancer at this time. So again, I have this signature for you at home. Scorpio, what are you doing? What are you changing at home that is really going to be pivotal in the story when we look at your life in this next few years, okay? When we get to the seventh, we're going to see Venus move into the energy of Cancer. We've got Mars traveling up here as well. But when Venus moves into the energy of Cancer, this lights up your ninth house space, okay? Publishing, marketing, broadcasting, long distance travel, learning, big ideas, things like this, legal things come to your table and to your attention at this time as well. But with Venus here, remember Venus is attracting. Let it come to you. Call it in, Scorpio. Let the universe do the heavy lifting. Cancer is a fellow water sign, so feel deeply into the vibration or into what you want and what you want to call or what you want to share, and then let the universe bring it up and out of you, right? You're just responsible for the footwork, not the outcome, right? This is a great time to practice that level of faith, ninth house, or philosophy in your life. And really, with all of this eclipse energy on the table, Scorpio, where have you been running around doing all of this heavy lifting that you didn't actually need to do. It took you up and out of your energy. It took you up and out of your role. So you could not deliver on your engagements the way that you promised because you were doing more work than you needed to. Venus here kind of calms that and says, wait, 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 wait. Now hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. Let me nurture me. Let me let me nurture my belief sector, right? Let me nurture that. What are you doing to feed what you believe and the philosophy that's in your life? Where are you going, right? This is fun. The ninth house is travel. Are you are you preparing? Are you booking a trip to go someplace and you're going to eat the delicious foods when this comes around? In your relationships, what have you believed around relationships for a very long time? And Venus is kind of softening that, making that diplomatic, giving you a space to explore if you believed that because it was true and it nourished you and it nourished your relationships or were you believing in something that was just it made you feel safe it made you feel secure and now Venus is like look maybe it's not that way it shows you something a little bit different or it empowers you to see something in a way that actually does nurture you I love that when we get to the 14th 
We've got Mercury coming out of retrograde um, in the energy of Taurus at 15 degrees of Taurus. Now you guys know I love the full retrograde cycle. So when we back up and we look at what you've been working on in this cycle, go back to April 7th, what happened at five degrees of Taurus in your chart? This is about relationships. Relationships have been lit up. Then we see the actual retrograde happen on the 21st. Then now we see um, Mercury coming direct here on the 14th at that five degrees. And we'll see Mercury leave post retrograde shadow of time on the 31st when it gets back to that 15 degrees. So for you, you know, in relationships, whether it's romance, whether it is contracts, businesses, honestly, the conversation of you with you, you with your medical practitioners, wherever you are partnering, where have you seen some like hiccups, holdups, miscommunications? I need to rethink that, redo that, re-sign that, renegotiate that, recommunicate that, right? There maybe have been some holdups in this particular area or like you didn't get the information you needed. As Mercury comes out of retrograde today, some things will start to move forward and I think you have full like the culmination of what you need information wise and you're more prepared to communicate efficiently and effectively or make a decision than you were before, but that won't fully be until the end of the month okay now on the 16th we see Jupiter move into the energy of Taurus so boom more blast to this relationship zone and it is an expansion this is an expansion but Jupiter being a benefic planet yes it brings benefit yes it brings opportunity but I like to think of Jupiter as the matching planet what you've got going here it will match you right? It's like your 401k, okay? What you put in, Jupiter will match, okay? But also Jupiter, no matter where you're at, while it's matching you, will send you a teacher to take you to the next level so that you can build something that has delicious longevity here, okay? Taurus is not short-sighted. It's not... Um, it's not a temporary fast burning energy. So what you will build, what you will expand here as a resource in your life is something that will be long term and you're kind of getting the big picture of it. Okay. So this is your relationship zone. What is your perspective? Where is your faith around relationships? You know, where are your connections in relationships? Jupiter likes to expand. So personally, professionally, what's happening in your relationship zone and Flashback 12 years ago, Jupiter was here then and you just live your patterns. So what was happening for you 12 years ago in your relationship zone that maybe now you're back into some similar pattern, but you're able to apply more wisdom to it. It's really kind of cool to pattern track. Now, when we get to the 19th, well, let me back up. I want to do the 17th first because I do think that this is really significant. So when we get to the 17th, Jupiter is going to come into this square with Pluto. Okay, you guys, and I think this, this is the biggest day. I think this is the biggest day for all of us of the year. Because when Jupiter and Pluto square against each other, it's like it closes the door on the old world. It closes the door on the old ways that we did things and all of things and all of these outdated beliefs, structures, models have to go. And each of us are tasked with having these major adjustments to how we do things. Now, in your particular case, it's like a major overhauling to your relationships, how you engage with them. You know, it's like if you have a hurt or you have... You have something in your relationship zone, right? You can't keep it. You, if, if it is not fully nurturing, it's like you can't really keep it anymore. Instead, going forward into the new world, you've been shown that it doesn't work. So now you're working on moving that forward. You know, did you get divorced from a spouse? Did you get married because you were single? And it's like how you were before ain't it right and as we trudge forward and to trudge means to walk with purpose as we trudge into this new world we take on these new jobs these new employers this new physical fitness this new status in the world it is simply a symbol here that what was is outdated and cannot be so make the adjustment because the old world is gone it's so significant i think okay now to seal the deal on all of that we've got a new moon happening at 28 degrees when we get to the 19th it's 28 degrees of taurus so plant your seeds of intention around these relationships whether it be professional 
personal, spiritual, physical, right? Remember, this is your first relationship. Whatever it is that you would like to have these new beginnings and these long-term successes to work with, this is the time to plant those seeds of intention, okay? When we get to the 20th, we're going to see Mars, your ruling planet, now move into Leo. So it moves into fire, which means that this actually creates with your energy a fixed square, right? So at some point, we're going to see, depending on what your degree of Scorpio energy is, that Mars will actually be squaring your sun. So this, this season, first of all, lights up your 10th house space, okay? So your career, your title in the world, what we call you, your soul level calling that you are offering out to your community or to the world. So we know you, we see you in public with this. So as Mars is here, it is a great time to take action. You know, it's a great time to do things in your career. It's a great time to be in public, to change your title, to go to the courthouse and fill out that paperwork to change your name forward or backwards, whatever that looks like for you, to do that adoption, right? Whatever it is that is very public. But also, like I said, Mars will square your sun at some point, depending on your degree placement during this. So you may find yourself... Um, you may find yourself coming on very strong or very driven towards something that you do want to do. And I encourage you to move forward with that. Make sure it's healthy, right? Because the square is telling you, I got to take action to get unfixed, right? To get out of where I was. So you may be being stubborn a little bit or a bit dramatic. This is Leo energy. And it's like, ah, da, 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 da. Piece back the drama, but take an action that is true to you and the truth sets you free and moves you forward, even if it causes a little conflict because Mars still is about conflict. So if there is a conflict or even the internal conflict, right? Man versus the world where it's like, oh, I got to have the courage to step into this role. That's still good conflict that moves you to the next place. So try to use this Mars and Leo season, you know, the very best that you can. You'll have this energy until July. Now, as we're going to close out this month on the 21st, we see the sun shining, bringing light, heat, life, and vitality into Gemini, which lights up your eighth house space. So intimacy and assets. Intimacy means you see into me. So sex, right? Like you're not having sex by yourself. And even if you are, that's fine, but it's not connected to a partnership per se, except for you and your body. But it's like sex, my reproductive organs, how I bring life, how I create life into this into this world, right? Where I create jobs from, because we create that from that root chakra reproductive space. It's esoteric wounds, esoteric healings, karmic debt, dharma. It all lives here, astrology. So as the sun moves here, you are motivated. You might even feel scattered, right? You're like, oh my God, I'm like everywhere. I need to learn all of the astrology. I need to do all of the therapy. I need to make every collaboration work. I need to fill out all of the insurance paperwork. <laughs> it can feel like a lot as the sun comes here, but also think back, pattern track back. What was happening for you last May? What was happening in this area of your chart? Were you making decisions? You were having conversations. Lots of communication was going on in this eighth house area. Were you signing that paperwork for your children to go to college? I mean, what were you doing that involved high, high, high communication as you were traveling for the four weeks between, you know, the end of May and the middle of June? All right, my absolutely beautiful Scorpio friends, big month, busy month for you. Please let me know everything that is shifting. You know, like <laughs> I shouldn't say that because then I, I like am requesting you to write a novel down in the in the description or in the comment section, which you can uh, if you'd like to share with us that way. I see every single one of your posts. I do my very best to acknowledge all of them. But more than that, I get so excited when you share and you encourage or you support each other. I mean, that just... It just warms me and you're changing so much that if you could use a little extra support, definitely leave it down there. But please share with me how you're changing and what's shifting in your life as you hear this horoscope and you walk through the month. All right, my beautiful Scorpio friends, I love you. Remember all of the changes that you're making today, all of the changes that you will make throughout the month. They literally change your vibration. So the things that you no longer want, it's so much harder for them to step in because you're just not calling on them anymore. All right, my beautiful friends, I love you. I'll see you next month. Bye.